Right, we're going to talk about murals. I see a lot of confusion on murals. So what you're going to learn in this video is going to be what a mural is, what other things look like murals but aren't, uh, what harlequins, what tweeds, and what cryptic murals are. Um, so let's get started. So first off, what is a mural dog? Well, now I'm talking Frenchies here, but it's certainly going to be pretty much true of other breeds like Aussies and Great Danes that have morals. So, you know, I may be a little bit different on some of the numbers I'm going to talk about, things like cryptic morals, but I think generally the conversation is going to be the same. But remember, I'm the Frenchie guy, not so much the, uh, um, the Aussie guy. So, you know, you could, if anybody says I'm wrong on the Aussies, then fine, let me know. Okay. So what is a moral? A moral dog is a dog that has a, a unique coat pattern. Um, and here's a picture of a moral. It is a blotchy pattern of, of, of color against a background with a indistinct lines, borders around those patches of, of color. Now the reason I bring that up is because that's rather different than a pied dog. Here's a pied dog. With the pied dog, you can see that they, the, the borders between the color and a white background is very distinct and well-defined. And all pieds are on a white background. Now, there's a thing called a harlequin, which can be a merle on a white background. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit, but it is quite a bit different. Now, the degree that a dog shows merle can be very varied. You can have some dogs that have hardly any merle at all, maybe just on the very tip of their ear. It's still a merle dog. Uh, some dogs have got merle over their entire body. Some dogs are pied merles, where they have a white background with patches of merle, which is a pied merle. So this could be a little bit confusing. Um, but if you go do a, a genetic test, Animal Genetics, UC Davis, um, Embark, um, those kind of places, then they will come back with um, a number. Well, they'll come back with a dog that is a merle. Boy, let's just talk about a non-merle dog. That is a non merle dog, two capital M's. This is a merle dog, one copy of M. You could have this, two copies of merle. That one is a get in trouble dog. You do not want that. That can end up with a merle dog that's deaf and blind. So that's the reason why when we're breeding merles, we're careful about what we breed a merle to because we don't want to breed two merles together. Let me just, uh, let me just talk about that for a second. Let's get a Punnett square out here and we'll talk about that in particular because this is an important point. So the Punnett square shows us what you're going to get when you have two dogs that you breed together. So what we're going to do here is we're going to breed a dog that is a merle to a dog that is a merle. And remember, it has just one copy of merle. That's it. It doesn't have two copies because that's one that's going to get us in trouble. What do we do if we put these together? We get one quarter not merles. We get one quarter your standard merle, which is fine, and you get one quarter double merle. That is the dog that can be blind or deaf. No fun at all. That's why you don't ever breed a merle to a merle. You always breed a merle to a non-merle. So what happens if you breed a merle to a non-merle? Well, back to the Punnett square again. Here's our Punnett square. So here is the dog that is not Merle. Bred to a dog that has one copy of Merle. Remember, it's a, it's a, just like the only other gene that acts like this is the Brindle gene, where it takes a single copy for it to be expressed. What do we get? A non-Merle to a Merle. We get that. And we get that. We get one half not Merle. And we get one half Merle. So we're going to get a half of them like that and a half of them like this. 50% of your litter you'd expect to be merle when you breed a non-merle dog to a merle, and that's what you do. Just go back a step here, and we're going to talk about what merles are. Remember, a merle dog is a dog that has this unique coat pattern that is different than pied, and it's different than brindle. Brindle is the other coat pattern that you could possibly get confused with it being a merle. So here's a brindle dog. The brindle patterns are striping, and you, know, you can 
see very little brindle on a dog, maybe just a little one little spot, typically it's on its back end somewhere, or it may have brindling all over it, it might be reversed, brindle look like a tiger, but brindling is not the same as merle. You can have, of course, a brindle merle, and so then you see, they tend to look more like a, a merle than a brindle. This call gets a little confusing, I, I know. So other unique things that you see in merle dogs is their eyes. They may very often have two different colored eyes, or maybe one eye where they've got two colors within the iris. Almost always, if you see that, those dogs are merles. So I've never seen a non merle dog in the Frenchie world where it had two different colored eyes or an iris that had two different colors or speckling within that eye. Those have always been merles. I don't know if that's 100% reliable, but it has been for me. Um, another thing about merles is they will have a red eye glow. So if you take those dogs after they're six weeks old or older, take them into a completely dark room, take your iPhone or your, or your Android phone, do a video with the, with the light and camera light on, you will see this demonic red glow. And there's a copy of it right here. That is either a dog that's a Merle, or it's a dog that's got two copies of Little B, Rojo, or two copies of Coco, Coco, or, a com or two of all, all of that lot together. That will, will fool you sometimes. So eye color is another useful thing. The, the, the different shading in two eyes, that's an indicator of Merle, and a red eye glow in a dog that you know is not chocolate, probably a Merle. You can have a cream dog that is Merle, and it will not look Merle at all, because cream, little e, little e, completely covers up all the other colors. Covers up brindle, covers up Merle. So if you have, someone says, I've got a platinum Merle, then that dog should come back on a test as being M, little m. So there's another one for you. All right, right now let's talk about cryptic Merles. What the heck is a cryptic Merle? And a cryptic merle is a dog that physically, or it's phenotype, pheno being physical, physically does not look merle at all. And I don't mean a cream dog here. I mean a dog that's, well, it could be a cream dog, but a cryptic merle, and that, by the way, is defined as it'd be big M, little m, c, cryptic. It's a cryptic merle. That dog doesn't show any signs of merle at all but it can produce morals. And there's, when you do a test with most of the places now, Animal Genetics I think now has it, certainly VetGen, UC Davis, I believe Embark, they will give you back a number for your moral. And that number is typically something between 200 and 300. And it's kind of a indication of the amount of moralness that you've got in your dog. And a cryptic moral, a cryptic merle will have a number from 200 to I think 246. I wrote my notes down somewhere. What is it? Yeah, to 246. That now there's some overlap on this, and you know not everybody will agree on the exact numbers, and I, I don't purport that that's the exact numbers. But basically, and you've got a dog that's in the low 200s. It's a cryptic merle. Then you have what's called an atypical, atypical merle, and that is from 240. Oops. Made a mess there, 247 to not much above that, 264, 264. Then you've got a classic Merle, and that's 265 to 269. And then you have the Harlequins, and we'll talk more about these here in a moment, Harlequins and Tweeds, and those are 270 and above. And they don't go much above that. I mean, I think 280 is the bottom of the chart on this. I think the, the, the range on this is typically not 300. It's more like 280. I don't think they ever get above that. Again, I'm not, I've never seen one above that. It doesn't mean that they couldn't have them happen. Okay, so what the heck is all this about? So the cryptic merle, this is the one that you cannot see any merle anywhere on its body. An atypical means it's not the classic pattern, and exactly what that is, I don't know, because I don't think I've ever seen an atypical. But these I do see a lot of. So classic morals, harlequins and tweeds, we're gonna talk more about those in this next part. I love harlequins, I like tweeds too. They've got more, I like morals in general, because I think they've got these really flashy coats. 
So I'm going to show you a picture here of a litter. Uh, this litter has, um, like most litters, you'd expect to have half the litter being not morals and half the litter being morals. Because again, we bred a moral dog, big M, little M, to a non moral dog, big M, big M. And we got a litter where we had some morals and some not morals. Okay, there's also a platinum in that litter. I'm not sure it'll be in the picture that you see, but the platinum is actually a moral. You can't see it, covered in cream. Okay, so this first dog is an absolutely gorgeous dog that we produced. It's camo color. And that is a Harlequin. And it's gonna have a number that is above, it's gonna have a number that's above 270 when you look at the, uh, the numbers that you get back from a test. And what you see here is a Harlequins, they are on a white background. And so you can see that in that picture. In fact, that dog is actually a Tweed. And a Tweed is a, so a Harlequins a white background, a Tweed is two colors two shades, two shades on another background. So typically it's two shades, uh, two shades, two shades. So you've got two shades on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a background. If it had two shades on a white background, then that would be a Harlequin Tweed, which is, it's not like fantastically rare, but certainly there's much less of those dogs around than there are standard classic, classic morals. I love those dogs too. I wanna talk about cryptic morals for a moment because you can breed, and I said you couldn't breed. I made the statement you shouldn't breed a moral to a moral, and that is not entirely true. You can breed a moral to a cryptic moral. Let's talk about that for a second. So remember that what we said was is if you had a moral dog, we're going to do a Punnett square here, a moral dog, you should not breed that back to a moral because you get this double moral situation that can get you in trouble. But if you breed this back to a cryptic moral, there's a little C right there, what would you get? Well, you get a non-moral dog, and you get a moral dog, and you get a cryptic moral, and you get a double copy moral, which is a cryptic and a uh, regular moral. That one would normally be a bad news. It only is bad news 4% of the time, apparently. I don't know who came up with those numbers, how they managed to do that, I don't know, but that's what I've read. So you could read a cryptic, breed a cryptic moral to a moral, and I'm sure there's people who've done that and haven't even realized it, because remember, the cryptic moral does not show the moral gene. So I think that's about it. Um, love morals. I think they're very, very nice looking dogs. Um, I've been breeding those for the last, oh, probably four or five years with great success. Never had a problem with deafness or blindness with a moral dog, but there again, I have never bred a moral to a moral, and I don't ever intend to. So I think you should follow that same policy too. Thanks for watching, bye.